Hey, what's going on, everybody? KSA Chris, Real Estate Blitz. We are doing a double header today. This is actually pretty cool. Um, so I literally just got off an interview talking about real estate investing, and now we're rolling right into another interview, which I'm pretty freaking pumped about because I was just talking with Adam, uh, Adam Nagara, one of the guys on my team. I was just talking about uh, if you've watched Real Estate Blitz for a while, you know that I love ISAs and ISA programs. When we had our large brokerage, I had ISAs. I've done a ton of videos on hiring ISAs, how to hire them, how to fire them, how to train them, and all sorts of other stuff. But I'm getting to a point in the maturity of my business where I just don't want to hire anybody. I, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with the training. I don't want to deal with any of it. I don't want to deal with the overhead because it's expensive. You know, you have an off month. Uh, I don't want to deal with any of it. I want to walk away and I want to focus more on uh, recruiting and training the agents and then getting to a point where I'm handing them here. Here's an appointment. Here's an appointment. Here's an appointment. So today I'm pretty freaking pumped. I got Josh on. I'm going to tell, of course, as I always do, I say, Josh, tell us who you are. But I want you to, if, if, if you're, even if you're in the beginning of your business and you're trying to create a business that's scalable, when I say business, I talk about this quite a bit on the Real Estate Blitz, a business is not sitting down and being the admin. A business is not sitting down and being the marketer and being this and being that and being everything. That's a job. There's a difference. There's a difference between a job and running a business. So this is, even if you're just a single agent, being able to have people around you in order to make you more profitable. And I keep going back to the interview I did with Todd Toback. Okay, Chris, you're the number one guy. You're the only guy that can make money. You're the only guy that can do exactly what you do. But imagine if you, could you, could you find somebody that can do what you do 50% of it? I says, yeah. I says, what if you hired three people? Now you're doing 150%. You may not make as much money if you're an individual, but what if you could go to 200% and make what you would be making as an individual and actually have the lifestyle and make the profit and actually manage and run a business instead of being the only freaking guy? That's a difference. So being able to hire somebody that could do a lot of things so you could focus more time on going out and prospecting, focus more time on working with your clients, focus more time on following up with your clients. This is what I'm kind of getting at, and this is why I'm excited about having uh, Josh on because I'm at this point right now in my business where we have to hire somebody. The question is, am I going to hire somebody full time in my office? Now I got to pay for a desk space. Now I got to pay for that. I got to train them. Or do I hire somebody that's already an expert at it and it makes financial sense so I can spend my money somewhere else to create more money? So I'm excited about this. So, Josh, with that said, tell us who you are and what you do. Yeah, man, I love the intro there. I'm an entrepreneur at heart and uh, uh, love the, uh, the 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 clarification there of the difference between owning a job and owning a business. That's, uh, I think, what we're all all in, in, in the ultimate goal and the ultimate achievement is to own a business and that that business provides freedom for us. So uh, my journey starts um, significantly back in 2011. Uh, I was one of the first three members of Viral Marketing um, and got to spend about two years traveling with the founder and CEO, Frank Klesitz. Uh, of course, viral marketing um, helps agents, you know, market to their database to remain top of mind and, and get all that referral and repeat business. It's cool business. Yeah. And so we were, you know, on the boots on the ground, going to every single conference under the sky, every single coaching event, just to, you know, create awareness of, of viral marketing and, and grow our um, client share. But along the way, I got to go to lots of different, uh, you know, top of the mind, uh, top of minds of the industry, dinners and, and happy hours and, and meetings and, um, you know, get to learn about what makes them tick, what makes them successful, but most importantly, what struggles that they share. And, um, you know, the seed for Rockerbox was really planted um, back in 2011, I was at the first Boomtown Mastermind, Boomtown Unite, and about 80% of the people in the room made some comment about being frustrated with the agents not following up with the leads. And so the idea was kind of planted back then. And uh, about two years later, I actually had a client that I was working with through Viral Marketing. Uh, her name is Spring Benson out of Salt Lake, Utah. And um, she had the typical issues that most uh, Boomtown account owners um, or CRM account owners have, which is you know, the agents aren't calling the leads fast enough or they're just not giving it enough attempts. And so those issues with speed to lead and follow up, I said, well, hey, you should try this new ISA model because back in 2013, there was you know, a couple of teams that were doing it at a high level internally. Um, and uh, so I kind of aligned myself with some of those teams who had built some really powerful in-house ISA services and started to help uh, work with Spring to model those um, those procedures and you know help her so, kind of solve that problem as well. And um, about a month or two into the first project, we kind of ran into some some frustrations, which um, 
you know, a lot of people do when they try to actually hire an in-house ISA, which is, right. you know, buyer leads are all about availability rather than productivity. So, you know, if you're doing outbound cold prospecting, you can do that whenever you want to. Like you can show right. up to the office early, late, you make, uh, you know, pick up the phone, smile and dial, make those calls whenever. But when someone's browsing on your website, you got to be there to greet them. So the issue was the economics just didn't make sense for one agent to have an ISA to cover her website for, you know, the typical mall hours, which is about 80 hours a week. And, uh, you know, of course, about a month into the training, we had, we had hired an ISA, we, we trained them, had them working Monday through Friday, nine to five, which of course that left out open all the hours on the weekends and the evenings. But very quickly, when you take someone who's not licensed and you train them how to make a bunch of phone calls and schedule appointments, uh, what do you think they go out and do? go get their real estate license. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so we were back at square one. Um, you know, we had kind of ironed out some of the processes, but, but we had a, a really a gaping hole for who was going to do the work, you know, cause the work's not complicated. It's just, a, just a process of, you know, figuring out who's going to wake up every single day and be committed to the work and be accountable to the work and be trained up to do the work. And so that's when I kind of realized this isn't just a one-time project that I'm going to help my friend out here with. This is actually, you know, a huge gaping uh, opportunity in the industry. And so back in 2013, I rolled up my sleeves and said, I'm going to figure out how to do this thing once and for all. And so uh, I set on a path to create Rockerbox. And uh, for those of you who might be wondering, what in the heck is a Rockerbox? It's an old gold mining tool used in the 19th century that they uh, you know, take a big pile of sand and gravel and dirt, you dump it in the Rockerbox, you shake it out, you, you put some water through it. And at the end of the day, you wind up with a couple little flakes of gold, which makes all that tedious, monotonous work uh, worthwhile, which is right. kind, of, kind of what we do with the internet leads. You know, it's uh, it's a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of people that you that you have to sift through to find those flakes of gold, which is a, a real estate commission. And so um, I set out in 2013 to start building the company by doing the work myself and, uh, you know, failing forward and, um, you know, learning from from those in the industry that, are, that I already had really good connections with that were doing this at a really high level. Um, and start modeling their systems and learning from the greatest coaches and um, basically putting together the model. And then once we kind of figured out how we could deliver it and scale it, then I started actually hiring and training uh, employees. And like I said, I'm, I'm anchored here in College Station, Texas. So this is all driven through the through the contributions of, you know, millennial talent of, of part time college students. And so right. um, what's exciting here is now we've, we've developed this very turnkey, well oiled machine where the premium ISA solution but another very exciting story that we have to share is, um, you know, like you you alluded to earlier, the difference between owning a job and owning a business. You know, from day one, I said, I'm going to own this job. I'm going to figure out how to do it. But over the last six years, what we've been able to do is, you know, combine our efforts through other individuals and invest in people's skills and, and really build a business out of it that uh, right. that I've been able to go on, you know, lengthy vacations and come back and the business is uh, more fruitful than it was when I left, which is the, the real true definition of a business there. So right. lots of lessons to be learned here and, and lots to share. And, um, you know, I appreciate all your contributions to the community. I obviously got to where I'm at from learning from others uh, in the industry. So I always love an opportunity to uh, carve out some time in my calendar and, and just come and share and, uh, and, right. and see what value I can provide. So happy to be a guest today. Really appreciate cool, it. Cool, man. I'm excited too. And I don't know if you noticed, but I keep looking over here to my right and it's because I'm writing down a buttload of questions and notes. Like, Good. and you know, I just like, I think the reason why a lot of people love watching real estate blitz is I just like, um, being raw. I, I don't like planning too much. I just want to talk. I just want to have honest conversations. And I think too many people are trying to, uh, pretend on who they are or what should be going on. And they're, you know, trying to talk about the next topic because there's different ways. They're usually selling some product. I'm not selling a product. Um, and I only bring on people that I want to talk to. So it's kind of a win for me. And I'm pretty excited about you because this has been an ongoing challenge in my business. It's been an ongoing problem for years now I've had in my business and it really starts off. So I'm going to go back to like the very first thing I wrote down. Agents not following up with leads. I could tell you last year, um, when I brought in my first ISA, after going through all of the agent, all of the leads that were inbound over a six month period, we found out that we potentially lost $400,000 within six months off the leads that came in. Wow. $400,000, $400,000 worth of people that had purchased homes. And if we would have followed up with them, they would have purchased those, could have purchased those homes through us. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, I, being the business owner, was putting in money to get these leads, but the agents, it was always an excuse, well, I'm too busy, or life happened, or I was sick, or it was always something. It was always some freaking reason. So then I have to come up with another, okay, so am I not training the agents right? 
Uh, am I not punishing the agent? Should I find a way to, how do I hold them accountable? Am I not holding them accountable? So as I'm putting more and more stringent things, then it started creating a toxic environment. That's what started happening next. I started creating a toxic environment and it wasn't because I was being a prick, but it was because I was literally, so every agent that joins the team, they're like, well, I want to be held accountable. Then when you start holding them accountable, they're like, well, you're just being a freaking, you're a, you're a, you're a damn, you know, you voted for Trump, didn't you? I know it. <laughs> You know, they're just real, you know, they get all crappy about right. it and they act like I'm a, a, some type of dictator. And I'm like, no, this is a business, man. Do you realize how much I spend on you every month? And you're, you're like, here's your number one priority. This is your number one priority on this team and you aren't doing anything. So am I supposed to just go, eh, no big deal and lose another 400,000? So that's when I looked at hiring somebody. So then I hire somebody and then I have to train them. And every day it's a new experience. So I'm still losing money. I'm still losing money. Because I didn't, I knew how to train them based off of what I, what I knew. So you don't know what you don't know, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what I didn't know. And when you do know, you, when you know better, you do better. So as I, as I grew through that, I was able to start teaching this ISA on things that they could start doing, but I still was losing money. Uh, man, it was a nightmare, absolute nightmare. And I just think I've gotten to a point now. Here it is. Uh, I'm trying to hire more staff. I know who I need to hire and an ISA solution because I'm starting to run into it again. Here it is with the team where, you know, they're getting so freaking busy. We're putting in so many deals in the escrow that they're working all of these escrows. Any, any, any given agent's working a minimum of two deals per month. And the justification is, well, you know, I'm so busy. And as the business owner, I'm like, I hear you, but I really don't freaking care. You can't just ignore more money. That's why you're here. So I love the fact that you guys are something that could be outsourced to take care of a huge, huge challenge. And it could be from a single agent all the way up to a major team. Or this is the big one for me. If you own a brokerage, why wouldn't you? So you could say, hey, in the brokerage, no, you're going to join my brokerage, but I'm going to give you deals. I'm going to invest in you. If you do it, we're going to do it on a, uh, you're going to, you're going to get 35% for opening a door and writing an offer. And you're going to give the rest to me because I'm just giving you a ready-made client like, or whatever you're going to, you know, 50, 50 split, whatever it might be, but it's extra capital that a broker could be doing. It's fantastic. So I definitely want to get deeper. I wrote a whole bunch of questions and we'll kind of get into that, but I kind of just want to just like free flow with this and say, you know, outside of what you've done to create and build this business, you saw a loophole. I've experienced in my own business. Almost every team lead that I speak to has dealt with it as well. Tell me more about like, what's the process? So somebody like me, I'm, I'm, I'm viewing it like, let's look at it like I'm looking for a solution right now. So I'm calling you or I'm interviewing you. I'm reaching out to your business, Rockerbox. I'm trying to find a solution. What would like, what would you tell me? Hey, this is what we do. I'm assuming just the pitch that you just gave, but like, what do you provide overall? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, you know, we've been doing this for so long and, and, and we've worked with so many different professionals from coast to coast. Um, you know, and there's a lots of different lead sources, tons of different CRMs. Um, we started out growing up on Boomtown. We were specialized in just Boomtown for a couple of years and then, and then started to grow and expand our wings. You know, once we, once we mastered the lead conversion process, then we started learning different technologies um, so that's one of the advantages. We, we're actually specialized in the technology. There's been you know, good. So let's talk about that because that's one of my questions. Like, yeah. so what systems, because there's so many systems now. So I started on Boomtown. Uh -huh. um, that's how we got into inbound leads. And actually that came from uh, on the investment side, we had on carrot. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know, okay, carrot or on carrot, but that was our inbound for motivated sellers on cash deals. Yeah. We went to Boomtown for inbound leads on the buy side. And then I think we switched from Boomtown to sync. Yep. And then we're on FirePoint right now, which oh, is, cool. yeah, yeah, you know, those are the three languages we speak currently. That's right. The, that's, that's the languages we're fluent in. But yeah, I mean, there's, they're, they're amazing, amazingly powerful technology um, pieces that have already been built. So um, again, the, at the end of the day, that what the client needs to make sure is being, being done is that people are being serviced. And right. so that's, that's our, that's our uh, secret sauce is we service the leads. You know, we're just, right. we're the human capital so, organization. We log into the t technology every single day. So right. yeah, someone are you look, servicing them on the specific technology or are yep. you rerouting to inbounds? No. So, because I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get to this for why are you rerouting inbounds, which you said no, but just hear me out. Mm -hmm. Um, to a specific type of CRM for you with a better AI, because some of the AIs suck, mm -hmm. um, with a better AI so you can manage 
multiple platforms. So example, like uh, Zillow inbound leads, realtor.com inbound leads, because not every agent is going to have a backend CRM. So are you telling agents that, hey, you need a backend CRM mm -hmm. so you can route these other platforms, which by the way, uh, again, I don't make any money off of this, but if you're, if you're a single agent or a small team, in my opinion, Firepoint is absolutely where you should be. If you're a big team, Sync is where you should be. But anyways, you, there's, I have a ton of videos. I have thousands of views on each one of those subjects. Yep. But if it, are you telling agents that they have or should get a CRM so they can reroute everything through that so you can connect through that technology? Yep. Or like, how do you do that? Yeah, I've, I've been a fan of it since day one. I mean, I, I met Greer back in 2011 at the first uh, Boomtown and just the, the vision that they were painting at that point in time. It was it was interesting because you had I always draw this diagram of, you know, the, there's the number of homes that are sold in the last uh, 10 years, which remains pretty consistent. But then you have Internet leads like back in 2011 when I first got in the game, there were less leads than there were homes that were sold. So that's why, if you remember back when Boomtown and Tiger Leads were selling accounts back in you know to the early days, they sold market exclusivity. They never yeah. really sold market exclusivity; it was perceived as market exclusivity because right. there was only there was only so many people going to Google and typing in AdWords. But right. now this little this little thing right here is hockey stick, and now there's hundreds of millions of registrations that are being generated for the same um, for the same number of homes that are being sold. So right. I was a fan of the vision back then. You invest in a, in a CRM. You invest in a home search website, you, you set sell and you stay the course with that CRM because, uh, again, as a growing up in viral marketing school, you know, the database is the most important asset that you own as a real estate professional. I mean, you don't actually create anything. It's the relationship that you own with the, with the people that know, like, and trust you. That's that's your real asset. So, yeah, yeah I'm a huge fan. You got to get a CRM. You got to get a home search website and just start building those leads and acquiring those leads over time. And then, and then and I, yeah. and I recommend people not to jump ship and go to the next bright, shiny object. Because they're all great pieces of technology. There's not one that's going to help you close deals more than the other. It's it's the work that you do. It's the connections that you make with individuals and the value that you that you offer them. That's what's going to help you close right. deals. And that's one of the questions I actually wrote down. So you had mentioned over time. I'm going to get to that because, but I still want to go back to finish up qualifying kind of the, sure. the last question I asked. So when you talk about the different variations, there's a ton of different types of inbound uh, opportunities. So I want to know. Um, are you strictly working from the inbound CRM and dealing with them as they're coming in? Do you take live calls? So let's say like a live transfer from Zillow, or is it just that one specific niche? Because there's a lot of different little variations. Yeah, there's there's tons of there's tons of different lead sources. And, and at your original question is, what would we do if you were looking at, um, um, you know, speaking with someone at Rockerbox about getting help with your online lead conversion? The first thing we would do is we would do an analysis of where you're at right now. So. Mm -hmm. Basically jump in that CRM, whether it's Boomtown, whether it's Sync, whether it's Firepoint, get in there and do an account diagnosis to, to measure a couple things. Number one, you already alluded to it, is, is your time to first call. Uh, so that's that's our number one bread and butter strategy is speed to lead. And right. we can do that better than anybody else in the game because we're here in the office 80 hours a week. So uh, and, and we're in United States, College Station, Texas, uh, home to Texas A&M. Uh, all of our um, callers are young professionals and they're all uh, normally headed onto some career path to uh, pursue some career in sales. So this is sort of their paid internship uh, while they're in school. And uh, cool. the, shifts are, the shifts are only four hours in length, so they're high energy. Uh, but that's what we're doing is we're we're going to jump in the account. We're going to do a diagnosis. We're going to figure out what's your speed to lead, because um, if it's if it's more than five minutes, you got you got some room to improve there. Uh, yep. The next thing we're going to look at, though, is if they don't answer the phone that first time, how many more attempts are you putting on that lead? Because we that's all know that, really the next question I yeah. was going to talk about. So over it's time, persistence. Yep. Yeah. So we want to see at least 10 attempts in the first couple of weeks, um, because, again, I mean, something happened in somebody's life that caused them to go to the internet, that caused them to throw your keywords into Google. They clicked on your link, they put in their name, they put in their phone number, they put in their email address, they're engaging in a search, like some, something caused that. There was some right. some sort of emotional trigger in their life. They just found out they're pregnant, they just, they're thinking about downsizing, they're thinking about, they just got a raise at work, like something emotional just triggered this search. So that's why the persistent attempts right up front are super important. So we would wanna check that. Right. And make sure that you're putting put And that's up. awesome. I think those two things is where agents lack. They can't usually call within five minutes, especially if they're a producing agent. And then we talk about follow ups. And this is what I would even ask for Rockerbox. Like, do you guys create. Uh, Okay, so let me back up. So, A, how long do you have your engagement? And after 
that that length of time of engagement with a potential with an inbound lead, the potential client. Um, do you set up within the uh, company CRM of uh, uh, drip campaigns or follow up campaigns within their CRM so you don't have to really work those unless they re engage? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So again, the um the, the we track everything here you know we're a very data driven organization so every single opportunity we've, we've identified since day one we knew you know what what source it came from what was it phone call was it text message was it email was it the first call was it the sixth call was it the fourth email you know we we know all of that information and so the the number one bread to, bread and butter strategy is just being there and greeting them on that first call that's where most opportunities come from the number two is from that first two week window and so that's why we put on a, a a, pretty much a blitz. It's 10 calls. It's four texts. It's four emails. Boom. Right. In that first two weeks, because that's our second greatest uh, source of opportunities. Our third right. greatest source of opportunities though, is our long-term nurture. And so that's somebody who we basically, we got a hold of them and, and they basically informed us that they are searching for a home. They're just not in that 90 day, um, like shopping window. Right. And so for that, you know, we did, we determined someone who's who's 90 days or further, they don't necessarily require the expertise of a realtor. You right. They require really great customer service and they require some you know, efficient and um, persistent follow-up, but they don't necessarily require the expertise of a realtor. So for those right. people, we keep those in our client care account um, because we can still make that monthly follow-up call and say, Hey, how's it going? We know you browsed on the search on the website in the past and you know, you were searching for a home. You told us last time that you were waiting for this. You know, is that still the case? Are you still getting the email? Right. So it's just a monthly courtesy call. So for those calls, again, because they're, they're not yet engaged in that 90 day window, we still make all those calls as well. Right. So. And I think that's awesome. So anybody that's watching this right now, um, I've done a lot of research on this. And I have to tell you, almost any business that I've heard of that's providing this type of a service, they do not. Uh, typically, what they're going to do is, is beat them up for five days. Mm -hmm. OK, they're going to beat them up for five days. And after that, unless they physically reach out. They don't provide any other service after the first five days. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanted to ask you those questions because I know a lot of different businesses that provide a similar service, but nowhere near the quality of what you're doing, which I yep. think is freaking awesome. Yep. I mean, we're the, we're the, we're the pioneers in the industry when it comes to lead conversion, our very original client is still with us. And so we, we modeled this off of a successful model, you know, and now it's just at this point it's copy paste. So right. we know it works rather than just what people will pay money for. If you get what I'm saying, oh yeah. Um, so we want to do what works, and that's making a bunch of phone calls, and that's staying in touch with the leads uh, indefinitely uh, until they need the expertise of a realtor. And then at that point, we want to hand them off. We want to get them in the agent's laps, and we want them to to, to shine and let their uh, let their services take place. At that point. Man, you're answering all my questions, and I'm pretty excited. This is cool. So this is okay. So <clears throat> big reason why I think a lot of real estate agents don't get coaching, even though I think every real estate age agent should have coach. Uh, Folks, Tom Brady has a coach. So, like, if you don't have one, you're just stupid. I'm sorry. Um, so, or a mentor at a minimum. You should at least have a mentor. Uh, you know, I did a ton of coaching. I have a lot of mentors now because they go deeper with me. Um, it's, it's, but it's a totally different hustle. So, anyways, in my opinion, um, you should have uh, these things at your disposal, but this is this is the biggest objection for every agent. I had uh, Michael Hellickson on. I've had a whole bunch of really great coaches on here, and I've interviewed on the Real Estate Blitz, and it always comes down to the same thing. Everybody always asks, well, what does it cost? And immediately, it turns into this negative thing. So it's like, instead of sitting there and going, hell, me and Adam had this conversation this morning, didn't we? We are talking about, okay, so we need to spend, we're talking about upping our ad spend $27,000 uh, into two very specific niches, and I even did it. I was like, man, 27,000, you know, he's like, yeah, but look at what we're going to make. I mean, just do the math on what we're going to make. Um, a lot of people, they don't look at the returns. They just think about, Ooh, are you going to pay this money? Like it's just very short sighted. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I'm sure that that's probably one of your biggest objections is, well, okay, how much is going to cost? So like, I got to ask, cause I know how much <laughs> I pay people when I hire a full time. And I say, and this is the difference again, you out there uh, watching, especially on YouTube, because that's when I get the, I get the most viewership on YouTube. It's not about the monthly cost. If you hire an ISA, it's not what you're paying them as an employee. It's also dealing with the employee stuff, especially if you're in California, which is a freaking nightmare. Uh, but outside of that, 
Uh, and if they freaking quit or you have to fire them and then they take you to court over that because you have to pay, you know, uh, uh, what, did, what did that lady get us for? She was here for a week and I fired her and she went and uh, said a, a workers comp or something. I couldn't believe it. And I'm like, I got to pay for this. That's why I fired her because I didn't want to pay her. She was awful. OK, yeah. so uh, but then you have to deal with training them. Then you have to deal with uh, life. Life gets in the way. Uh, well, my kid or this happened. I'm sick. So you, you, they end up becoming, if you have one, if you can only afford one, they end up becoming your single point of failure because now you've taken everything away from the agents because they've already proven that they can't do the follow-ups or deal with it anyways. So again, to me, the cost isn't the monetary sum. It's everything else, the time and the energy, which is also a monetary sum to me. So What's the objection? Here's the objection. What's the cost? Yeah, that's a great question. I love the objection. Here's your objection handler. It's not about the cost. It's about how much money we're going to put in your pocket, right? Mm -hmm. um, but speaking about coaches, no, I'm, I am uh, I have many coaches myself, and one of my marketing coaches, his name is James Malinchek, and uh, he taught me many, many years ago, you don't use the word spend or cost. You take that out of your language. Instead, you use the word invest. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know, if you are looking at something as a cost that, that we, when we, when we say the word cost or spend, I, I feel, and I sense money being taken out of my pocket, right? right? Like you're being robbed, uh, which you're looking. Yeah. Anything that you're looking at as an improvement in your business to scale it and create leverage and create freedom should be an investment. That's how you should think of it. So mm -hmm. obviously looking at a permanent ISA solution, you're looking at freeing up your time. There's obviously the time of, you know, selecting the candidate, hiring the candidate, training the candidate, you know, being there to coach them up and provide them support and feedback, one-on-ones, you know, continued coaching and, and script and dialogue practice. Um, you know, there's so much time that you freed up. Uh, but then obviously, again, you look at the, the actual economics behind it. I mean, we're open 80 hours a week. Um, so that's the support that we provide for your website. Anytime someone comes to the website, we're calling it right away. And then we're making all the other additional call attempts, you know, in the mornings and the evenings throughout the day so that we, plus you're your setting up all the drip campaigns, follow up campaigns. You're, yep. I mean, th to me, I don't think people realize I, I see it. I see it all the time. They think it's easy. Oh, mm -hmm. I'll just get in there and I'll just set up something and, you know, yeah, I'll follow up a month with this thing. So again, you don't know what you don't know. And when you know better, you do better. So you're attempting to create something based off of something you don't freaking know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, what I always love to see when people jump in, in, in groups and they're like, Hey, I'm thinking about hiring my first ISA. Does anybody have a job posting I could borrow? Like, wow, man. I wonder if the person you're about to hire knows that the person that, that, no that they're about to there. work for is this clueless about right. your hiring, your training, your coaching. Like they don't even know how to explain what job it is that you're going to do. So, right. I mean, again, it's, been fun growing a business, bootstrapping it and, and growing it from the ground up. Um, but I can tell you some of the huge milestones that we hit here as an organization was when we had more than one person in the room at the same time that naturally creates competition. It naturally creates a, a, a steeper a learning curve. You know, people can learn from each other's mistakes. They can learn from each other's successes. Um, so having more than one person in the room, we actually have huddles before all of our shifts. It's something we started several years ago, you know, to make the work meaningful, to get people started off on the right tone, to get people practiced and set in the right mindset uh, and, and let them know, you know, what, what are going to be the goals that we're going to hold each other accountable to and how can we uh, recognize each other for our achievements. And so, um, you know, these are the things that when you do this work as an organization versus like the lone wolf mentality right. of like, I'm going to hire my one guy and put him in the corner. The results just just compound and are exponential. So all of that, what you get to tap into this amazing resource that we've built over the last several years, it's, it's literally a thousand dollar a month minimum. Uh, and that covers up to 100, 100 leads. And then and that's what I was going to ask. Do, so you're doing it basically cost per lead in a sense. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a utility company. So we basically you all the leads come to us, we work them and then distribute all the hot ones out to your agents. And then at the end of the month, we just see how much work went into it and just bill in arrears. So cool. So it's like basically $10 per lead to have exactly. that lead worked until it freaking either pays out or it's just dead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's awesome. So I think yep. that's what I like the most. Uh, and, and does it continue to scale that way? Roughly $10 per lead yeah. or? Yeah, exactly. And it gets, it, you know, if it, we do have some larger accounts, larger teams that we have more economical rates for, um, which, you know, we can always negotiate, but, uh, yeah, it's basically about 10 bucks a lead. So if you ever want to, you know, think about how you're going to grow and up your ad spend and up your agent count, uh, it's very, very easy to grow with us. Uh, right. So I like think it's, thing. yeah, because I've heard roughly, uh, and, and, and so I'll back up for, actually, I'll go into that in a second. So first off the other companies that I know of, they don't provide anywhere near what you're providing. I would say they're either competitive or a little more expensive. Um, and then on top of that, when I look at 
the overall growth and opportunity, um, I know how much it costs to hire somebody. So let's say you hired somebody. So in-house, California, if I'm paying somebody, uh, I'm going to be spending a minimum of two thousand, really twenty five hundred dollars a month to have them here, and I still have to deal with all of the all of the other garbage. Mm-hmm. I have to train them. I have to hold them accountable. I have to make sure they're doing their damn job. I need to make sure, you know, I got to deal with them when they're sick. I got to mm-hmm. deal with employee stuff. I got to do all their tax stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it sucks. It just mm-hmm. freaking sucks. And then eventually, which I've had happen almost always, even my assistants, one of my assistants, uh, that was my assistants for assistant for a couple of years. She's now one of my agents. Like they always end up, yep. uh, wanting to get their license and then having the conversation with you. It's like, Hey, Chris, can we talk? So, um, been thinking about getting my license or I just started my license mm-hmm. and uh, when I get it, can I work for you? And it's like, fuck, you know, now I gotta, yeah. I gotta train somebody again. I gotta go out and start this insane process all over. Yeah. So at 10 bucks a lead, so a hundred leads uh, to get perspective on a lot of people, you figure uh, you're building a team. You're going to want to provide depending on where you're at, at least here uh, we provide roughly 30 leads per agent. Um, so if you're doing the math, that's really going to support three agents. Each agent should be doing, let's say one deal per month, especially if it's quality leads with good conversion, uh, which again, it's really freaking hard to do with agents. So that's going to cost you figure cost per lead. Uh, if you're doing it super cheap, it's going to be on Facebook. It's a lower quality lead, but you can get that anywhere from one to $5. If you're doing uh, Google ads, it could be anywhere from, uh, fifteen dollars if you're doing it through a system. System, so let's say Boomtown, something like that. Fifteen dollars, twenty-five dollars per lead. Sometimes more expensive. Again, depending on your market. If you're doing it through Zillow, uh, you're really looking at a mm, hundred dollars per lead. It could go up from there again, depending on your your market. So if you're investing all this money into your agents and your leads, this is money that you're spending, in my opinion. I think a lot of team leads, especially in the beginning, they're trying to give their agents 10, 15, 20, 30 leads per month because that's kind of the status quo. And they don't really have an expectation of a return from that because they're trying to get their money in a different way, which I think is stupid. I want a return on every dollar that I put in. So to drop another $10, so now let's talk about the math. Uh, $5 lead, so now it's a $15 per lead. If it's a $15 per lead, uh, Google Ads, or even all the way up to 20, now it's a $30 lead. If it's Facebook, if you're willing to spend $100 per lead, why not 110 <laughs> to ensure that your max, again, think about this, folks, all right, to really maximize and take away the energy and think about this too. You can adjust your splits. So I'm, I'm talking from the agent side real quick. Mm-hmm. You adjust your splits. So if somebody's on your team, you're doing, let's say, a 60-40 split or even a 50-50 split. If all they're doing is getting a phone call or a text message that says, and that's what the next question I'm going to ask you, a phone call or a text message says, hey, Jill uh, lives in uh, Temecula. Jill wants to look at X house, X house, and X house. She has a purchase price of this much, and Jill's ready to go. She's been pre-qualified. Your lender's already spoken to her. Uh, She wants you to meet her on Tuesday at 11 o'clock to open up the house. Are you available? You are? Fantastic. So you go out there. You open a house. Jill says, this is the house for me. Or Jill says, no, this isn't the house for me. No problem, Jill. She goes back. She still gets work. She gets qualified to look at another freaking place. Jill ends up writing an offer because Jill's been matured, and then you're making pretty much free money. So if you're a team lead and you know that your agent is going to be making free money and you're doing an investment of an extra $10 per lead, could you change that split to where it's more than an upside to your benefit? Guess what, agent, Mr. Mr. Mrs. Agent? You were making a 50% off of each deal or you were making 60% off each, each deal. Here's the thing. You're only going to make 35 or 40% off of each deal because you don't have to do any work anymore. You're literally just getting phone calls, going out, opening doors, and writing an offer. It's free freaking money. Yep. Imagine how much more money you could reinvest in order to bring in more leads so you can spend an extra $10 per lead to get work forever from Rockerbox so you can make more freaking money and actually expand your team because at that point now what you're really doing, again, difference between a business and a job is you spend a majority of your time actually uh, uh, recruiting and training, recruiting and training, recruiting and training, recruiting and training to make sure your paperwork isn't screwed up and they know compliance so you don't get sued. Seems like a pretty damn good deal to me, Uh, but I could be wrong, Josh. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, man, that's that's uh, spot on. I appreciate the math that you did there as well. I actually have a, a diagram a lot of times that I share from stage that shows all those different steps from uh, website visitor to website registration to conversion of a rocker box scrub lead to then uh, a signed buyer rep agreement. And I mean, your math is spot on. I mean, people and this talk just about from experience. One- I've never looked at anything online. This is just from I live it. This yeah, is man. my job. 
Yeah, people people talk about a one to three percent conversion from registration, and um, you know essentially what that is. You take a hundred registrations, you're talking about one to three of them. That's what a percent means of a hundred. Uh, actually, one to three of those registrations that's actually going to turn into a closing. So I mean, again, rocker box. We try to paint the picture here. It's a fraction of a fraction of a percent here, but it's a flake of gold. It's not a flake of sand, but it's it's sitting right there piled in with all the other sand. So it requires a lot of work. And so that's the benefit that we provide to people is, um, you know, it's 90 percent of the work is already taken care of. You you took your list of 100 people, you wove a magic wand and it turned into 10 people that you really need to hustle and scrub. And of those 10 people, you're going to find the one to three that you actually write an offer and close on. That's Which is freaking awesome. awesome. Yeah. So you mentioned that when somebody gives you a call and you start, you know, going through the process, you go, th you go through their CRM, you start scrubbing, you look at it, you're trying to find metrics so you can really give good quality work towards that agent or, mm -hmm. or that team mm -hmm. or that brokerage, which I don't know if you guys work with brokerages, but I'm telling you, uh, I, I've owned a brokerage. And if I had known about Rockerbox back then, I would have twisted my entire brokerage just be centered around that. Mm -hmm. Besides the point, I digress. Um, so, you know, I guess what I'm kind of thinking in my head. So you go through, you find the metrics, and after that, then you go back and say, "Here's our recommendations. Here's how we're going to set you up." Do you use a, a, an admin account where all of the leads go to a specific admin? Then you keep all of your agents on, and then you parse that out to the agents, or like, what's your process after that? Yeah, exactly. Good, great question. So we we have uh, we talked earlier about knowing the technology. So we actually have different teams in our office that are specialized in, in each of those technologies um, because although they do accomplish the same goal, they're a little bit different, each one of those. And uh, so we want to be specialized in the work that we do. So, um, you know, if you were a sync client, we would basically introduce you to our sync client care manager. If you're a Boomtown, Boomtown manager, so on and so forth. So uh, basically what we do is when we understand what what uh, where you're at currently and where you want to where you want to get. Um, you know, we break, make some recommendations on, on what type of call procedures should go into your account. Obviously, the instant call, the persistent number of attempts, taking a look at what your long term database could look like. Um, there's also analysis that we do on your database as it currently stands. Uh, a lot of people have had websites for quite some time. So you might have, you know, sometimes hundreds, thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of leads that are sitting in that account rotting away on the vine. So. Um, there's some strategies that we can deploy to um, bring some uh, new life to some of those old leads as well. Uh, but essentially, we, we introduce you to the client care manager, and then that client care manager is going to deploy your, your launch strategy and your launch date um, and set up your account. And so you're, you're exactly right. We basically take the, the admin seat inside of the account. And so that way, all of the new registrations funnel in um, through our client care department. And uh, then we can handle all the leads uh, the right way from the very beginning, as well as through the through the life of the lead. And then as soon as they are ready to go, um, at that point, we just distribute them out to the agents. And there's several different ways that we do that. Um, but the newest and most exciting way that we have is an actual warm transfer for um, uh, when a, a lead registers on the website and we call right. them right away. If they're actually ready to go and speak with an agent, we can get uh, all of your agent's cell phone numbers and put them in a call group and click a couple buttons um, with some uh, some new technology that we've invested in and uh, actually do a warm transfer of the of the lead. So that's cool. Like you were saying before, your agent can literally be sitting there, you know, have our, our rocker box number saved in their phone and the phone rings and they're the first to answer it. And there they go. They just got a, a hot lead literally just landed in their lap. So that's awesome. Yeah. So I, I you brought up something that I actually wrote down as one of my questions. And I know this happens, especially with uh, whether you've had a team for a while uh, like we have, you know, so we have thousands and thousands of, of, of old leads. Mm -hmm. So in order to scrub an old lead, um, uh, you know, a it's, it's time, energy and money. Mm -hmm. So is it the same process as far as how much it would cost to scrub old leads? Um, same cost, you know, roughly $10 per lead. Yeah, so we're very excited about a new uh, service offering that we that we've uh, launched in 2019. We beta tested it a little bit at the end of last year, and right. uh, we've got outstanding results. So we're, we're now making it available to our clients. But it's essentially a call night. I'm sure you're familiar with a, a, a structures of a call night before. Have you oh, ever yeah. bribed your agents in with some pizza and beer to come in after hours and make some calls? Oh yeah, you done that before? So yeah, we do it of, once a month. That's awesome, man. And and I love it when uh, offices obviously have that uh, that culture and that that routine. They do it. Uh, but for a lot of people, the call night, it sounds like a great idea. They just uh, couldn't actually 
um, twist their agent's arms hard enough to actually get them to come in the office and be productive and make a call. So what we've done is, is like I said, we beta started beta testing it last year and we've actually started rolling it out uh, this year is actually uh, emulating a call night experience. So um, if you've got a big old database of a bunch of leads, what we can do is we'll we'll go through and look at the data and run it through some algorithms algorithm to try to determine who's uh, most likely still engaged in their search. Um, but then we'll basically bring in a team of callers in the PM hours, um, which most people are normally available. Uh, it's a little bit higher contact ratio after hours. And then we'll just right. bring in a, a team of callers and basically just attack that list all night long. And uh, so we schedule it with the team so that they know, that way they know which which evening it is. So they can normally either have some agents standing by uh, or they're prepared for the rush of opportunities. And, you know, we basically put a blitz on the on the list and uh, generate about a handful of opportunities and pass them over to the lender and pass them over to the agents and pass them over to the listing specialists. And, uh, right. Um, it's a nice little boost of energy whenever yeah. uh, whenever you want. And that's to cool because I think, you know, trying to trying to rehash old leads it's it's pretty damn tough mm -hmm. and i think for me when we did our transition and we had all these old leads it was like let's set up uh, some type of follow up or some type of you know let's let's set up something else to let that run so if they mature great but mm -hmm. let's really focus on what's coming in now Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and really it's just putting, setting up a drip campaign for all past leads prior to when we actually, you know, started our new influx, uh, with the present team. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's pretty cool that you guys do something like that. Yep. And I definitely could see how that's beneficial. So yeah, depending on you know, how big your database is, you could plan those out, you know, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. It just depends on how, right. many, how many times you want to hit it. I can't believe that we've almost been on for a freaking hour. <laughs> that's that's insane. I mean, I, and, and it's funny because I do a lot of interviews and a lot of this, this the Real Estate Blitz also started from my live radio show. I used to have a live radio show oh, nice. and I got tired of doing live radio because I was being restricted on what I could do based off of the sponsors for that freaking show. Yeah. And it would piss me off. Like I would get, hey, we need to interview so-and-so real quick in the middle of my freaking show. Plus you just added more sponsors. So I'm, I have less time yeah. uh, to do my show because you've got to get paid. And then in the process, it's some guy that wants to talk over the phone that has nothing to do with what the whatever I was talking about on the show to begin with. Yeah. And I had to watch my language all the time, which I don't yeah. like to do. So it was just, <laughs> it was one of those things that just kind of pissed me off. And, you know, it's just so cool that we could just go deeper, deeper, deeper on something like this. And then in the process, you lose track of time. You're like, holy crap, we've had no commercial interruptions and we've almost gone through an entire freaking hour. Yeah. Yep. Which is awesome. So yes. this is, you know, we're almost out of time and I don't want to hold you because I, I, you know, I still run a business. So I'm like always running around like a madman. I'm sure you are too. So I time block, I live and die by time blocks and my time block is almost up with you. Sure. But outside of, I want you to go ahead and pass everybody your information, but outside of that, um, I would like to uh, I, you. So as I'm getting the information, I want you to tell somebody if they're going to reach out to Rockbox because I'm going to do it because I'm telling you, we were having this conversation this morning. I'm like, OK, am I going to rehire ISAs because I'm at that point where I need to do it within this 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 restructure that I did? Mm -hmm. Or are we going to actually go out and find somebody to do this for us? And I'm 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 a sold. Uh, I'm I'm a convert. So outside of looking awesome. at that. Yeah. Uh, outside of looking at that, then I, I want to say, you know, what? Is step one if somebody wants to say, "Look, Rockerbox makes good sense for me. I want to explore it." Sure. Well, I mean, you can essentially just shoot me an email, uh, Josh at Rockerbox dot com, and it's spelled a little differently. It's R O K R B O X rock our box.com and yeah if you're as excited as you are just shoot me your email and i'll docusign the agreement and we'll get rocking and rolling <laughs> just kidding yeah. <laughs> we want to take you through the consultation we get rocks we wanna, yeah we want to make sure that we, we want to make sure that we're a good fit obviously we work with lots of agents over the years and so we want to make sure that your goals are aligned with ours and you're looking for a long-term solution but uh if you you know obviously we can we can schedule a consultation um whenever you'd like but uh if you want to facebook stalk us before we engage in a further relationship i invite you to do that in fact i encourage you to give us a like on facebook so go out to facebook spell it the same way r-o-k-r-b-o-x and give us a like because uh, we do produce a lot of content we do facebook live streams here in the office we you'll get to see some of our you know employee anniversaries and testimonials uh, a lot of our clients as well will join us on our own video blog and share some of their top secrets and tips on how they're getting the best conversion with their internet leads so yeah give us a like on facebook uh, or you can always shoot me an email again josh at rockerbox.com uh and uh yeah we'd love to schedule a consultation and give you a full evaluation of where you're at right now and, and see if we can cool so this is what I would say. So everybody that's watching this, especially because I'm going to get a ton of views on this uh, on YouTube, I want to present a challenge. 
I'm going to do a video when we start because I'm actually getting ready to run Arizona tomorrow. So this probably won't be for like a week, maybe two weeks when we actually start because I got to, you know, I told you there's some new budget uh, adjustments we're going to be doing and we're probably going to be looking to start on the first. So with that said, from the first, I'm going to create a challenge. I want to do the rocker box, uh, the, the Jesus Christ, rocker box challenge. Okay. I want to give, I don't know if we should do a 60 day or a 90 day, probably 90 days because I think that's a good amount of time for true maturity and actually do an anal basically analytics. So at 90 days, you and I jump back on and we actually say, okay, prior, and, and, and here's the thing, like we're going to basically be pulling down our pants and showing everybody prior. This, this is what we would do for call to contact, speed the lead, if you will. This is what we would do for texts, calls, whatever. Here's how poorly our uh, follow-ups were. Adjustments were made. Here's how many leads from the day one. Here's how many leads came in from month one, month two, month three. Here's how much we've uh, adjusted and, and and changed, like those interesting dynamics. And here's the return that we actually got from our 90-day experience with Rockerbox. Would you be down for that challenge with me? Totally, man. I, love I think that would just be fun. Are, yeah, I love metrics-driven organizations. And uh, everything we do is transparent because we, we work within the CRM, so we can track all those statistics with you, man. We'd love to, yeah. we'd love to do it. I just think that'd be kind of cool. And I mean, A, it's, I like putting out, I think I told you, I like putting out quality content uh, because I don't make money on this. Nobody pays me. Nobody's hiring me. Nobody's giving me any kickbacks or anything like that. Um, I've been offered. I've just never taken them. And to me, it's one of those things where I just like putting out something that works. I like telling people about products that freaking work. Mm -hmm. And if they don't work, I, I'm pretty ruthless. And I've actually had different companies hit me up and like, hey, could you like take down your YouTube video? I'm like, no, because you guys suck, you know? <laughs> and uh, well, that's not completely true. Well, it turns out I was a paying customer. Let's talk about it. I'll tell you why you suck. Like, I'll break it down for you. Uh, oh, well, yeah, we do that. I know you do do that because you suck. So <laughs> I, I actually like providing uh, quality businesses. And, and honestly, the videos that do the best that I've done, we're actually doing versus videos. You know, this system versus that system. Um, and I would like to do that to really show if this works, stop giving the objection. Oh, it's it's a thousand dollars per month. Yes. No, it's ten dollars per lead. And it's going to give you X return. If you're if you view it from a return to me, I review it from a return standpoint. So I'm spending I, I'm, I don't even know if I want to do the math right now, but let's say I'm spending three thousand dollars a month on inbound leads. And I know I get one deal. I get one deal, depending on your market. So the market where I'm at, in a on a on a uh, let's say it's South Riverside, that's a ten thousand dollar paycheck. Okay, if it's North County, that's a twenty thousand dollar paycheck for spending three thousand dollars. If I throw another thousand, that's that's four thousand dollars. Now this is still to scale. So you got it. To me, again, I look at it like that. And these are in the beginning. This is a one, two, three. you really should as it matures over time. So three to six months, because think about it, inbound leads, folks. I have done videos on this. How long does it take an inbound lead to mature? How long does it take for an open house lead to mature? How long, right? Three to six months, 1% should be moving more towards 3% because you have people that started six months ago that are maturing in your pipeline that are now ready to go along with the low hanging fruit that you're going to be bringing in every month. So it should build on itself. Imagine we're going to be a year into actually maturing all of those leads, deals, and how much money you can reinvest in order to ramp up, get outside of 100 leads, to go to 400 leads or 500 leads per month. So to me, I just view it that way. It's just math. And uh, I would love to do that 90-day challenge. And I think what I'll do, I'm going to sit down. I'll write out, I'll write out a budget. Like we'll start with a smaller budget and then we'll ramp up every month. We'll like either we'll either go, we'll double that or we'll look to triple it every month to kind of see how those returns start stacking on themselves. And we'll do like a 90 day rocker, uh, rocker box challenge. I just think awesome. that'd be fun. Yeah. That'd be great, man. I'm excited. Yeah, that'd be badass. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So yeah, see, it's crazy how much time goes by. So with that said, I think I'm going to end it. Do you want to say anything else before we drop off? Oh, just always happy to, uh, you know, share our knowledge here. Like I said, you know, we're the, the experts in online lead conversion. Also have a lot of lessons learned and, you know, um, hiring and training a top millennial talent here. Again, our, our entire team is, um, you know, composed of uh, part-time college students or actually full-time college students, but part-time employees uh, who are looking to pursue their career in sales. So 
Um, lots of opportunity here. Always happy to share uh, information. Just shoot me an email. Again, josh at rockerbox.com. It's R-O-K-R-B-O-X.com. Thanks again for having me on the show, man. It was a right on, Rockerbox. So do me a favor. Hold on one second, Josh. Once we log off, I'll talk to you on the side. And Enjoy for it. everybody else, as always, thank you so much for watching Real Estate Blitz. It's, this is just something that I do because I'm passionate about it. Uh, I want agents to stop sucking. I want you to stop being greedy, arrogant people. I want you to win. I want you to prove that real estate agents should be here to stay. People are not going to get the same value from uh, some online platform that's not going to truly, genuinely look to help them end a chapter or start a new chapter of their life. Okay. I'm hoping I can add value in some way. I'm hoping I can guide you to good systems. I'm hoping I can help you be profitable. I'm hoping I can help you guide, guide you to like good coaching. And a lot of it is just based off of me showing you what successes I'm having to where I've done challenges like last year, for those of you that followed me, how to become a six figure agent with literally 500 bucks. It took me, if you guys remember, uh, I told you what, you know, you could do it in six months. I think I did it in two. Uh, two and a half months, you know, I'm trying to show you how to physically do these things. And I did it with no past clients. I'm showing you how to physically do these things so you can actually get out there and win and not make us look like crap in the inner general community. So they don't think we're used car salesmen. So thank you so much. Do me a favor, like, share, comment, check me out on YouTube, the real estate blitz, check us out on Facebook, the real estate blitz. I mean, we're, we're, we're all over the place. If you want to listen to me on podcasts, which I guess, you know, I have a better looking face in my voice, but Hey, that's cool too. You can listen to me. Uh, you can catch us on SoundCloud and a few other spots, but thank you so much. As always, I appreciate KSA, Chris, real estate blitz. I am out of here. Talk to y'all later. Bye.